The 2024 Absa Cape Epic features more single track per kilometre than any previous edition of the race. Creating the hundreds of purpose-built mountain bike trails requires thousands of man-hours of hard work. Some are sculpted by machine, but most South African single tracks are hand-built. The master trail builders are mountain bikers themselves and create sections which often reflect their own personalities. In Tilbach, Dion Wilkins was the primary trail guru, while in the Witzenberg Valley, the Hanukkah brothers, Hannes and Saki, along with Ernst van Dijk, have built testing technical tracks. In Wellington, the wild boar trails are the tireless work of Peter van Weyck. Stellenbosch's stages in the coming days will feature single tracks by Marant Boerter, Cory Muller, Bennett Nell, and the Islands Valley trail builders. For stage five, the race will be exploring Wellington's wild boar trails for the final time. The relatively short day would be an exciting one, backloaded with incredible single tracks and opportunities for aggressive racing. The day before, the shortened Queen stage had seen exceptionally aggressive racing, even by the 2024 Absent Cape Epic's belligerent standards. Buff Megamo had started stage four in yellow and attempted to defend from the front. Yet Canyon City found the race leader's pace too slow and went on the offensive. This allowed Toyota Specialized 91 and World Bicycle Relief to follow, while Hans Becking and Wout Allemann slipped back, suffered a puncture and continued to cede time. Lucas Baum and Gael Geiger were also enduring another difficult day. Up front, Nino Schurter led Sebastian Finney, Matt Beers, Howard Grotz, Andreas Servolt and Marcus Stutzman up and over the cliffhanger. On the descent back towards Wellington, the world champion created a small advantage. But Beers reeled the World Bicycle Relief team back in once the trails came to an end. This set up a sprint with Scherter and Finney versus Beers and Grotz. The former won the battle, but the latter earned yellow in the process. You, you don't come here to race for second place. Uh, that was one of the, the most intense days of racing I think we've had so far, just because it, it was short and punchy and the, you know, the descents were really fast. Uh, but it was, it was a fun day of racing, even though there was some suffering. After stage four, Toyota Specialized 91 led World Bicycle Relief by two minutes. Buff Megamo slipped from first to third, while Canyon City's strong back-to-back -back days moved them up from sixth to fifth as William Vittoria dropped a placing. In the Aramex women's race, the story of the early part of the stage was the efficient Infinity Insure SCP SRAM team's travails. Vera Lossa and Alexa Scada found themselves behind E4 Private Client Holdings and the Scott Calabandida Bulls. Ahead, Ghost Factory Racing, Cannondale Factory Racing and Toyota Specialized 91 pushed on, each taking a turn to test the other two teams' legs. Despite that, the trio of squads were inseparable throughout the 2,500 meters of climbing on the 73-kilometer long stage. Even the 16-kilometer ascent to the summit of the cliffhanger could not break the teams apart. And so the day came down to a three-way sprint finish, during which Anna Terpster and Nicole Kohler outboxed and outboxed Candice Lil, Mona Mittervalna, Sofia gomez Viafan, and Samara Shepard. Uh, not really. I was prepared for more attacks, to be honest. Uh, I think both Specialized and Cannondale wanted to make the pace uh, high from the beginning. But uh, it turned out that actually Nicole and I were the fastest there, so it was nice to know like they can try, but we're we're still there, we're hanging on. Uh, but still, like you have to climb up all these climbs. Doesn't matter if you go uh, fast or slow, you have to get up there, and it's already not that easy. So I think it was still a, a tough day for everybody, uh, but uh, it was nice that we had the most energy left for a sprint finish again. Heading into Stage 5, Ghost Factory Racing lead Cannondale Factory Racing by 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Toyota Specialized 91 were third, while Loss and Scada dropped to fifth behind Lena Giraud and Hayley Preen. 
Stage 5 was the shortest of the race at just 70 kilometers in length with 1,750 meters of climbing. It was, however, still packed with exciting riding, particularly in the back end of the course. Once the teams passed through Valbedacht and Linton Park, the trails began in earnest with Lay Slong, Happy Hog, True Grit and the Toyota Tough Golden Mile. Despite the shorter distance, the UCI men were not expecting an easy stage, especially with so much left to race for. We are on uh, stage five, so uh, yeah, by this time uh, your legs don't really, really get worse or you just get used to the pain. Um, and uh, yeah, I think um, we're in for some, some good and fast riding. It's a short stage. Um, I think some guys will take it as a, you know easy recovery day and then you'll have some guys that will you know, want to punch it for a stage win. Um, but uh, I think yeah, it'll be tricky to get away with the GC fight still, still on. Um, but uh, yeah, it seems also it's been, been cooling down a little bit, so it'll be like a day out. It's 70k and uh, a bit of climbing. I'm not gonna tell where we attack. I don't know actually. <laughs> so it's hard to say. But uh, lots of single track in the end, so that's nice for us. Yeah, I think it'll be yeah fast at the start, and then there's a couple single tracks that positioning is important. But the nice thing about single track is you get to sort of take a breather. Uh, it's still hard pedaling, but you don't have to fight. When the gun fired and the flag dropped, Buff Megamo raced off the line followed by massive teams all looking for an opportunity to claim a good result. With this being the third last stage, the chances for a stage win, a podium place or a top 10 finish were ticking away. Only the bravest would be rewarded on stage five. The same was true in the women's race, though there was a lot to reflect upon after a dramatic queen stage and with an intense stage five about to begin. Yeah, I think there's two two places um, that the race can be made today um, and yeah I mean it's all good and well having a plan but I think um, the most important thing is being able to adapt the plan if the plan doesn't go according to plan so um, yeah we've spoken about a few scenarios and yeah I just I really um, hope that today we can put some pressure on. Yeah we're gonna uh, see how we feel at the start and uh, pace it well and kind of race our own race. We have like, we know how much time we need to make up. So if we're feeling good, we'll go for it. If not, we'll kind of reserve for tomorrow. Heading out for the last time from CPUT's Wellington campus, the RMX women's race would follow the well-established trend. A steady start to the first significant climb and then a dramatic ramping up of the pace. Though that did not mean that the start was relaxing. Jostling for position and a general air of tension made for a mentally taxing beginning to the day's riding. Powering off the asphalt and onto the gravel roads outside of Wellington, the Canyon City support team member Peter Vakoch led the field. Baga Eurosteel's Philip Basin peeled a toy right behind. But on the first little kick of the day, Beers took over at the front. The big South African is a firm believer in defending from the front. And when he sets a tempo, it often prevents attacks entirely, especially over rolling terrain. The hills and dales of the Wellington Winelands are ideal for the Toyota Specialized 91 rider to work his magic. But the landscape was not hard enough to reduce the group to under 10 teams. The aptly named Roller Coaster was the first single track of the day and provided a thrilling ride through the Renostefeld Feinbos. At the front, Beer still led, while in the middle of the group, Paga Eurostil's de Toy was followed by his team leader, Base. Dust and early morning light made the descending on dual tracks between the vineyards difficult and dangerous. Yet, with each rider trusting the wheel ahead, there was no need to stress. A rider who knew the trails better than anyone else in the group was Johan van Sail. The young Toyota Specialized rider's partner, Alex Miller, withdrew after the start and he was thus riding solo. Because of this, he couldn't get involved in the racing but had to sit at the back of the lead group through the trails. In the single track climb, Schurter came to the fore. 
The World Bicycle Relief rider knew he had to keep the pressure on Beers and Grotz in order to soften them up for an attack later in the stage. The only men who could follow his pace were the Toyota Specialized 91 team, Finney, Canyon City Seervolt and Stutzman and the Bulls Mavericks. Simon Schneller and Usubu were bringing up the back of the group but having their best day of the race. When the pace increased under pressure from Beers, Uber and Schneller were distanced slightly, as was Seervolt, who was caught behind the Bulls Mavericks pair. But there was no cause for concern. They'd be able to close the small gap when the trails turned downhill. The same could not be said for Buff Megamo, who are 140 back with Singer Racing and Van Sale. In the Aramex women's race, the undulating early kilometers provided no challenges significant enough to thin the UCI women's field. Thus, the full 18-team group rode together for the best part of 10 kilometers. Behind the big general classification battles, there were fights unfolding for 9th, 10th and 11th, as well as for 13th, 14th and 15th. Teams like Pertec, Efficient Infinity Insure and She Untamed had exchanged positions throughout the week as had the Cape Classic 380, Cruise Control and Elements teams. These battles within the greater race are one of the untold features of every edition of the ABSA Cape Epic, unseen by the viewers but of vital importance to the riders involved, especially for Daniel Stradom and Steph Walters who are wearing the ABSA African jerseys. When the pace increased as the climbs became slightly more arduous, a more elite selection was enforced by Lil. She and Mittenwalde were joined in that group by their usual rivals Terpstra and Kohler as well as Gomez Viafan and Shepard. Lawson and Skada were also present in the group, along with both E4 teams, E4 Private Client Holdings and E4 Mente Corpo. Jerome Prien have been strong all week, while Margot Moschetti and Constanza Fasolis have grown into the event getting stronger day by day. The same is true at a slightly higher level for Scott Calabandida Bulls, Natalia Fischer and Irina Luchelschwab while the efficient Infinity and Sure SCB SRAM combination have been losing ground since Stage 3. On Stage 5, Skarda and Lossa again lost contact with the favourites group too early in the piece. A gravel road clearly had Gomez Viafan feeling at home because the Argentine used a kick in the district road to reduce the lead group to just her Toyota Specialized 91 and the two factory racing teams. The single tracks which followed were Ghost Factory Racing Territory. Terpstra and Kohler used the trails to put their rivals on the back foot and on a dusty descent managed to distance Gomez Viafan and Shepard. This set up a finale between the leaders and Cannondale Factory Racing. At the back of the race, Matthew Carter and Richard McMartin are the hyenas, the official sweeps of the APSA Cape Epic. What, what I've learned over the years is that um, we always used to hope that we'd have clean days and we'd get to the finish quickly, but as the, as the race sweeps, every broken bike, every broken body, every broken chain is, 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 is a friend of ours and a partner of ours. So it's always a long, long week. Um, I think there's a big field this year. It's going to be hot. So we are forecasting an action-packed week as always. Though they're not allowed to physically help, either by providing mechanical assistance or a helping hand, Carter and McMartin provide emotional support to those who need it most when the untamed bears its teeth. It's been a hell of a day. Yes, my shattered nerves, it's been a hell of a day. It's, um, that climb to the Witzenberg Valley was, was really tough for the back of the field. It hurt a lot of people. And then up in the Witzenberg, it's so rocky and, and technical that there's a lot of tired riders at the back of this race. This is our last rider in the field. He's from Portugal. We've got about four Ks to go. He's got about 20 minutes. He's absolutely exhausted, but he's in good spirits. So I reckon we'll get there. On stage two, the hyenas nurse Luis Dominguez to the finish line at Saronsburg after a tough day out. It was very hard today. It's the last water point. I want to finish. 
And then the, the, the marshal said, you must go and finish this stage. And I go, yes. And Richard assist me. And the left cast, they push me, push me. And I finished. It's a very emotional job. Um, you know, you spend hours with these riders and you, you develop a relationship with them, you're chatting with them and you're really you know, spurring them on, wanting them to finish. But the amazing part of the job is that there are a lot of heartwarming, happy stories. There are riders that against all odds they make it to the finish line. And I think that's why we do it. It's, it's eight beautiful days of riding. We get to ride every meter of this beautiful race and we see the best of the human spirit come out at the back. And, um, and that's why we do it. Back with the UCI men and the lead group of Toyota Specialized 91, World Bicycle Relief, Canyon City and Bulls Mavericks were into the wild boar trails and the back half of the course. True Grit suited Schurter's skills to perfection, but Uber's imperfect preparation for the race was starting to tell. He's been a late replacement for Axel Rudil Cortina and has not been training for an eight-day stage race. He was not giving in without a fight, however, and continued to battle to cling onto his teammate's wheel. The climbs out of Dulhoff back towards Wellington made this task even harder. Seeing the trouble his partner was in, Schneller went to the front of the pack and made an attempt to control the tempo. By slowing slightly on the climb, he was buying time for Uber to summit within touching distance of the group. Even this though was too little too late. Uber never regained contact and the Bulls Mavericks had to abandon their hopes of a stage victory. Further back, the buff Megamo, William Vittoria and Singer racing teams were in a futile chase. There was no way they would be able to reel in the group, which Schurter was driving towards the finish. Though the 10-time world champion's speed was having the opposite effect to that which he had intended. Rather than putting Beers, Grotz, Sievold and Stutzman under pressure, it was making life uncomfortable for his partner Finney. The Dane lost meters at first, then dropped off entirely, forcing Schurter to halt his charge. He had to drop back to nurse Finney through the trails. Though they were still making better time than Schneller and Uber. Unaware and unaffected by that drama, William Vittoria, Buff Megamo and Singer Racing continued to ride to limit their losses. Smelling blood, Beers seized control of the stage and stomped massive power through his pedals. Grotz was hiding in his slip, but by no means had a free ride to the finish. Canyon City had missed the train and were watching hopes of a second stage win right away. For Scherter and Finney, the consequences were greater. Every second they conceded would make their task of overturning their pre-stage two-minute deficit harder over the coming days. Winning in yellow, Toyota Specialized 91 claimed a potentially pivotal stage win. Canyon City were content with their hard-fought second. while World Bicycle Relief were less enamored by ceding time to Beers and Grotz. Amazing, it's awesome. We really, obviously, it's awesome being in yellow and everything, but uh, we've really wanted a stage win. You know, we've come second, third, third, fourth, and uh, so it's nice to get a stage win, and in yellow it's even better. So, um, yeah, we weren't sure, but the pace was really high. Um, I set it really high in the beginning, maybe a bit too high. I thought um, Nino and them would want to roll with us, but um, yeah, I think it was a little way, maybe it went a little bit too hard. So. Yeah, our plane was the, from uh, mid stage, there was like coming a lot of single trails up, and uh, our plan was to put a bit of pressure on there. And I realized a bit late that uh, Finney was a bit in, in struggle, so uh, we had then to change our strategy and uh, try to get to the finish. Unfortunately, last hour, half an hour was missing a little bit, but uh, it was good racing, it was, uh, was, was a fun stage. Uh, that's, uh, that's racing, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was quite different stage, but yeah, we, we both felt good. Uh, our pace was sometimes brutal. Uh, I was a couple of moments in the, at the back of the group and it was, I was riding almost blind sometimes. Uh, 
yeah, and then I decided to, to try to go in front and it worked out quite well. Uh, yeah, super nice. I, I would not, somehow would not expect this from a stage like this for us. Uh, but it's, uh, it seems like we, we are in a good direction. <laughs> For the first time in the race, Beers and Grot stood atop the stage podium. They were flanked by Sirvoth and Stutzmann, as well as by Schurter and Finney. Toyota Specialized 91's margin of victory was 12 seconds over Canyon City. World Bicycle Relief conceded 57 seconds to the day's victors. The Bulls Mavericks had their best result of the race, finishing fourth. Beers and Grotz will be wearing yellow heading into the penultimate stage. The Toyota Specialized 91 team's buffer after stage 5 is 2 minutes and 57 seconds over World Bicycle Relief. Buff Megamo maintained their podium place, but their gap to Canyon City is down to 3 minutes and 5 seconds. The ABSA African jersey wearers moved up to 10th overall, following Scott Calabandida Majorsi's plunge from 9th to 18th. In the RMX women's race, the top two teams are locked in their seemingly eternal battle. So little has separated the Ghost Factory Racing and Cannondale Factory Racing squads during the 2024 APSA Cape Epic's first six days. On two occasions, Terpstra and Kola had earned a single minute's advantage on a stage, but generally the gap has been one of narrow seconds. Lil and Mittavolna shadowing the women in orange, or the race leaders matching the moves of the world and South African marathon champion. There had been moments of weakness for Mittervalna in particular, but as stage 5 wore on, Lil appeared to be taking strain. Sensing the South African struggles, Kola upped the pace, turning a bad moment into an extremely tough few minutes and then more. In a show of great patience and then precise application of their superior form, Ghost Factory Racing cranked up the pressure. Though the elastic snapped, Lil did not crack. Having summited the final climb, Kola kicked off the time trial to the finish line. She and Terpstra swapped turns on the front, keeping the pace as high as they possibly could, eking out additional seconds in the battle for overall victory. Closing in on the finish, it was clear that Ghost Factory Racing would win their sixth successive stage as they hunted Laura Stegger and Sina Fry's record of a perfect clean sweep of stage victories. Finish line high fives and broad grins capped another masterful performance for the women in orange. Lil and Mittervalna's chase behind limited Cannondale Factory Racing's losses as best they could, but once again they had to be content with second. Toyota Specialized 91 completed the podium on the day when Gomez Viafan and Shepard drove across the line. Yeah, we, we knew the trail, the last trail, and we could ride into it with one and two, like just behind each other, and we got a little gap, and yeah, in the end we, we just tried to, to share the work until the finish, and we came away with a few seconds, and yeah, in our win, it's pretty cool. Last climb, I tried a lot, um, like many times to get around, but they were like, yeah, they, they are racing very smart, like in the trail they're going super slow and then as soon as it's open they push on and then I try to overtake but it's always too short and obviously they together they can block me um, but yeah for sure I smelled like a little bit of weakness today a hundred percent like um, so it's two more days to go so I think we, we we can get it right like today I felt a lot lot better and I could have gone a lot faster in the end um, so good we will, we will get it in the next two days, right, I think. Yeah, great to see Sophia bounce back after yesterday. She's riding really strong. So, um, yeah, it's good. We've still got some strengths to play with for the last couple of days. And then we'll be heading into trails that we know around Stellenbosch that we really enjoy as well. So, yeah, still anything can happen out there. The Cape Epic, there's so much can happen. So, uh, yeah, we keep fighting and see what we can do. For the sixth time in the race, Terpstra and Kohler top the podium. Lil and Mittevalna stood alongside them with Gomez Viafan and Shepard on the other side. Ghost Factory Racing's margin of victory was a slender but important 20 seconds. Toyota Specialized 91 lost 3 minutes and 40 on the day, while E4 Private Client Holdings continued to stay in front of Efficient Infinity Insure SCB SRAM and finished 4th on the day. Terpstra and Kola will wear the Aramex Orange Chivita jerseys during the penultimate stage. 
The Ghost Factory Racing Pair's advantage heading into Stage 6 is 2.51. Toyota Specialized are at 11.39, while 7.5 minutes separate 4th and 5th. Steph Alters and Danielle Stratum are the best-placed APSA African combination in 11th. Stage 6 is a deceptively tough day in the Stellenbosch Winelands. Taking in the steep mountain dual tracks and scintillating single tracks of the Simonsberg, the 87km route includes 2,400 metres of climbing. Spectators can base themselves at Marathi to see the teams twice, including as they drop down the Toyota Tough segment, Methuselah.